My name is Jennifer Ballard. I currently teach at North County High School. This is my 26th year of teaching in the county, and I've been with the AVID program since 2004. Today, I'm going to talk about the college application process in hopes of maybe reducing some of the stress that parents and students might feel when they think about applying to colleges. So the topics covered today are going to be finding a major or career of interest, finding colleges to match the majors and careers, the application requirements, and the application resources that are available. So I like to start off with finding a major or career of interest because I know a lot of students and parents want to know um, what colleges to apply to based on something that they're interested in studying. And some students may not know what they want to study until their sophomore year of college, and that's perfectly fine. But there's a couple of resources to help people find a major or a career. Naviance is one of them. Um, it's available to all students in the public school system in grades 9 through 12. They have career interests, career matches, um, majors that are associated with a career of interest, and also college searches based on those majors. And we'll talk about Naviance in a little bit. Another thing that's available to students is the Myers-Briggs personality test. It shows key aspects of personality, strength, and weakness. And what I find interesting is based on your personality, they give you a list of um, careers that you might want to look into, as well as some careers to avoid. So I'm going to open this up. So here's the Myers-Briggs. There are 16 different personalities. Um, when I took this, I was the counselor. So if I go to counselor, it tells me about my strengths, the overview. But what I'm interested in today is the careers. So here for the careers, it talks about um, different like categories. So there's like healthcare, different occupations that are listed under that, counseling and social services. Let's say that I'm interested in physical therapists. I can click on that. I can look at the duties that are involved on an everyday basis, the work environment, work schedules, education and training and certificates that might be involved in needing um, what you need for this career, personality and interests, the pay scale, the job outlook, as well as job prospects. And then there's um, more information that you can find about this career. So this is really good. Um, and as you saw before, there's a lot of information regarding um, different careers that students can look at. The next thing that we can do is uh, go to College Board and Road Trip Nation. Now you need to have an account set up for this, but they have career inventories, career clusters, career videos, career information. So here is the career finder and it says like start exploring. And you know, sometimes technology is wonderful, um, even if it's a little slow. So I just played around with this a little bit. You can build your profile, uh, save careers of interest, make a plan on like what you need to do in high school and in college to make that career a reality. So you can explore and save careers as a next step. But I was just playing around um, something that is not in my wheelhouse, but I find interesting producers, directors, media programming directors, music directors and composers. So there's information about this. Uh, there's different videos with people that live that life, um, as well as, you know, um, the latest videos on it, student perspectives for um, students that are pursuing those careers in college. So like I said, this is a lot of uh, useful information. And if we go to explore and save, um, again, we can find, let's say that we go to film and vid video editors. So it's really similar. Um, they have a list of related careers. They have videos, um, how it matches your interests. There's an overview of what the career is like as far as like the salary, the projected job growth, which is something that, you know, people want to keep in mind as they're looking for careers.
So again, if you're, if your child is still not sure about a major, that's okay because a lot of people don't even know what they want um, until they go to college and they start taking a variety of classes. And a lot of times students will change their major anywhere from one to three times on average during their four years of college. I know I definitely did. I went into college thinking I wanted to be an accountant. Um, but when I started taking some of the math and the accounting class, I realized, oh no, this is not for me. Um, and then I took the course of education to be a teacher. So looking at the application process, um, now uh, most colleges require like these nine basic things, but then you'll have some of the colleges that are the outliers that require different things. So there's usually an application fee. I have this asterisk because if uh, your student or your child qualifies for free and reduced lunch, oftentimes the colleges will waive an application fee. But the application fee can be anywhere from $25 to $100. There's the college application itself. Typically, there's an essay that go, goes along with the college application. You'll need letters of recommendation from teachers and the school counselor. So it's really important for your child to um, get to know a couple of teachers. Um, like on a a personal level so that they can write really good letters of recommendation. And it's also a good idea that they meet with their school counselor so that they can get to know them as well. Um, the school, the colleges will request a high school transcript, a school report, which is from the counselor. And that basically says, um, you know, this is the, this is the demographics of the school. These are the different honors and AP classes um, that the school offers. So it's kind of like a snapshot of the school itself. Not all colleges, but many colleges require an SAT or ACT score. And usually um, students take the SAT or ACT for the first time their junior year of high school. If you are applying for in-state colleges, um, you need to fill out a proof of residency form because most of the time if you ap apply to a public school in-state, you will have a cheaper tuition rate versus somebody that's in Virginia applying to a public school in Maryland. So they need to know that you actually do live in Maryland in order to qualify for that in-state fee or in-state cost. And then there's the FAFSA. Um, that's the free application for federal student aid. And even if you might not qualify or your child might not qualify for um, like any uh, scholarship money or assistance from FAFSA, a lot of the schools still require it. And the FAFSA is something that opens um, in October every year. So if you have a student that's a junior, then just remember that next year, um, you know, October 1st, check out the FAFSA form. And then if your child is a senior and they haven't filled out the FAFSA, that's something that you're gonna wanna need to do. So here we are with Naviance again. Um, Naviance is a really good site to apply for colleges too, because it's kind of like this school database where it houses a lot of information that colleges need. So students can um, look at colleges they're thinking about, they can apply to colleges from Naviance. The teachers and counselors, when they write their letters of recommendation for the students, they can upload them to Naviance. Uh, the transcripts from students are uploaded to Naviance and Basically, then the counselor can just check all the boxes and send everything electronically to the schools if the schools um, accept things electronically. There are a few schools that require all of the information to be sent by mail. And then your child also can um, send the information through Common App. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. So going to Naviance. Now, this is just me as a demo, so I, I don't have access to everything that your child would have access to because it knows that I'm not a senior and I'm not really applying to colleges. But here is colleges I'm thinking about. So I was just like, you know, playing around. Let's say I went, I'm thinking about the University of Baltimore. I'm thinking about East Carolina University, Goucher College, and Howard. If you notice these boxes, um, this is the delivery type. So the University of Baltimore 
This can be um, delivered through Naviance, and it doesn't um, partner with Common App. So we talked about Common App, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But with Common App, um, if you see here, there's three schools that partner with Common App. So Common App is just what it says. It's a common application. So you go into Common App and you fill out the application and then you just list the schools that you want to apply to. And then everything is housed right there. So your schools are listed. You fill out the application. There's um, an application essay. And then once you fill that out, you can just submit that and all of the schools that apply to Common App will get that application and we'll get that essay. So you only have to do it once. If I wanted to apply to the University of Baltimore, I would have to go to their website, pull up their college application and apply there. So any schools that do not have a CA in the box, um, your child would have to go to each individual college website and apply to those colleges. And then um, here it says like East Carolina, for application deadlines. There's um, rolling admissions is available from December 1st through spring. For Goucher, um, early action, they want the college application to be given to them by December 1st. So if your child has like a top three um, list of schools that they definitely want to apply to and they're like really hoping to get into, and then they might want to apply for early action. Um, and then that means that the colleges know that you're really serious about that school and they'll look at your application. They'll look at your uh, financial needs and status. And if they like what they see in your child, then they can accept them earlier. And that means that they have the opportunity to get more scholarships offered from that college as well. If the student isn't like, you know, um, Goucher's not really high on their list of priorities, then maybe they would wait until January 15th for a regular decision. Something else um, over here, if we look at, there are like super matches. Now, if I click on this, it's not really gonna show me anything. Um, so super matches, it has like must have, nice to have, and you can save your scores, but it's not going to show me like if I'm an academic match to that school, because again, I'm not a real student. So my SAT scores aren't listed. My GPA isn't listed. But that's what I like about Naviance is um, it has things like compare me, you know, um, based on my GPA, based on my SAT or ACT scores, what are my chances of getting into that school? They also have, like I was just saying, um, this is College Compare. There are also college visits. So let's say that it's always a good idea, by the way, to go and visit a college. If it's one of like your um, students or child's like top five, top 10, if they're really serious about it. So on Naviance, you can um, do virtual visits. A lot of the high schools have college admissions people coming to the high schools. And on Naviance, they can, um, register to attend those um, like guest speaking activities from the college admissions people when they talk to the students. And a lot of the high schools have college fairs. So always be on the lookout for that. If your high school doesn't have a college fair, um, the Anne Arundel Community College will have a college fair. And usually the counselors will post that information on Naviance. So the students can look at that and then they can attend the college fair and that's a really good way to interact with some of the college admissions people, get more information about the college, and um, ask questions that they have. So here we're talking about the common application. So there are um, six application essays to choose from. So when you do the common application, you have to write an essay that goes with it. Um, the college will list, the co there's a college list of schools that partner with Common App. And you saw that on Naviance by that little CA. There's still college fees that are required for various colleges for the applications. And then a big, a really big important thing on Common App is to match the FERPA, Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, with Naviance. 
um, so that the counselors can send off all of the information from Naviance to those Common App schools. So this is what Common App looks like. It says find a college, plan for college, why college matters, paying for college, family resources, um, first time applicants guide for applying to college. You have to create an account. I didn't create an account, but once you do it, it's pretty set forward as far as like following the, the steps and the clicks to figure out what you need to do. Um, and it's a fairly easy application process. And like I said, your, your child can apply to like six different schools that partner with the Common App. They fill out one application, one essay, now, some of the colleges may have like some short answers that they want you to fill out as well. But once they're done with that main um, application, then they hit submit and all of their information goes to all of those schools. So that's the beauty of the common application. There's also the college application resources uh, continued, the common black app college application. So for here, there's a $20 application fee uh, you can apply to like 65 or 66 different HBCUs, and it takes about 10 minutes. So if you open up this link, it's right here. Um, it talks it talks about there, um, about the website, about the program. Um, apply now. So as a student, it says get started. Um, I'm not going to do this because when I was playing around with different things. Um, when I initially started teaching AVID uh, 11 and 12, I was like pretending to be a student and I got so many emails and like applications and letters in the mail and flyers inviting me to open houses that I, I just don't do that anymore. <laughs> but again, um, you know, this is something um, worth checking out if your child is interested in attending an HBCU. If your child is an athlete and they wanna play a sport at college, um, it's really important for them to go to the NCAA athletic site, especially if they want to play like for Division One. They have to register. So here it says Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three. Division One students they have to um, apply and fill out this information to make sure that they qualify um, for their amateurism standards and that they're academically prepared for the coursework. And then if we click here, it says want to play a college sport, you can just register, create an account, and it'll tell you, um, you know, all the different things about like what you need to do and why it's important um, to register through the NCAA. So my final thoughts. Yes, the college application process can be stressful at times. Um, but hopefully this slideshow has shed some light on the process of applying to colleges. So I will talk to you later. Just remember, take some deep breaths. It's okay. You'll get through it.